Welcome to another lively edition of The Deadly Experiment, ladies and gentlemen. Rick Adams, your host and producer here on local public access cable television and also rebroadcast on YouTube worldwide where we have a growing audience on our channel. We also do the talk shows on Republic Broadcasting Network. So we try to be a little busy beaver here and there. Folks, we're rapidly running out of time. I hope you realize that. No, it isn't the threat that the whole world is out of control and these crazy Muslims are just taking over the planet. Obviously, Muslims are not responsible for what we think is a deteriorating terrorist picture across the globe. Now, stop for a minute and think, because today we're going to show you the fraud of ISIS, who runs ISIS, who created ISIS, and who created this whole mythology of Al-Qaeda, al cia Mossada, and the latest groups, the Khorasan groups, and the Shaboom Shaboom <laughs> el Shaba. I mean, if you haven't figured it out by now, you're, well, I don't want to use the nasty words, but let's face it. One man said, there's none dumber than the dumb. You know, in this word of God here that we worship, that we who believe as Israelites and also as the Adamic peoples of the Bible, that God created out of nothing, out of the earth of the soil. And that's why when we die physically, our bodies go back into the soil, the earth. No, we didn't come from the sea. We didn't come from some single-celled amoeba that came out of inorganic matter as the crazy evolutionists will have you believe. Just like the global warming proponents. Now, where are they all gone this past winter, huh? Where? That's not past yet, but for those of you watching it in the future, you say, my goodness, it's never been hotter, right? Oh, excuse me. What? Well, we're all brainwashed. Global warming. Holocaust, cold sun, flat earth, Martian invasion, the man in the moon, you name it, you'll believe it. All you need is some imbecilio, you know, on the team you should never trust or a whole group of others on the National Baloney Company with Lion Brian and Lion Lester now to tell you it's so. And you say it must be so. I saw it with my own eyes. But what did you see? You saw, in many cases, a computer-generated image, a green screening that now we have used for this background. And you can see, we green screened the background. I'm not in some real fallout shelter or some, you know, some bunker or soon to be in a cave. But the point is to show you how the background can be created so that you can be made to believe in something that doesn't exist. Richard Engelstein from the National Baloney Company over there in Bahrain or he's there in Yemen and he's not there. But the background makes it look as if he's there. You see men like, you remember the, the pictures of Saddam Hussein always shot, what is it, a shotgun, a rifle, he was firing into the air all the time. And, and Hitler walking across Europe with the mustache and the, and the hands and all of the goose-stepping and all of that. All propaganda. All of it was made for the dumb American audience. This Bible here tells us God says his people, the true Adamic, Caucasian, Jacobite, Israelite people of the Bible, the Caucasian Israelites as they are known today, the sons of Jacob. They came from Abraham as the races came from, except one. That's the race of Cain. Abraham was not their father. Well, they could say when they merged, of course, with Esau that Abraham was technically their father. But Jesus said, after 1,700 years of race mixing, if ye were of Abraham's seed, you would love me. Instead, you seek to murder me. But ye are of your father the devil. In John 8, 44, the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. So friends, this Bible tells us God's own words, my people are sottish. The word sadish means stupid. They are sheep being led to the slaughter. And we are a stupid nation. We are a stupid people. We proved that in World War II when we went to Europe, involved ourselves in another war, 
And after the first war, to end all wars, we were told, we would go back again because of those silly, dirty, filthy, vile, slanty eyes that pulled a fast, sneaky attack on America. Well, they didn't. And to prove it, the Venona intercepts, as well as other declassified documents, now show the Roosevelt administration knew exactly when the Japanese would attack through Operation Magic, the decoding machinery of World War II. Admiral Kimmel's grandson, his great-grandson, and Thomas K. Kimmel has demonstrated that across the globe, but no one in the media has taken much interest at all in, in Kimmel, Thomas K. Kimmel the grandson of Admiral Kimmel from Pearl Harbor. All we see is those dirty Japs, those terrible Nazis running across the globe. But as Walter Cronkite said, as a correspondent in World War II, he says, I've done everything I can to give a very good image, in so many words, of the Soviet Red Army while promoting the idea that the National Socialists were the most evil people on the face of the earth, going into Poland for no reason whatsoever and no justification to go and react to the fact that the United States, then to be aligned with communist Russia, would in fact be taking Poland, Czechoslovakia, and Hungary, and other capitals of, uh, and other states in Europe so that the Eastern European and Central European nations could be totally enslaved following that war. American stupid, going into war, allegedly to defeat tyranny, actually extending it, enlarging it, and then having to face it in a few short years in Korea, in Vietnam, and then the fall of communism. The wall come down all of a sudden, we spent ourselves into bankruptcy doing it. And guess what? We armed the Soviet Union for four decades. Then we had to have a new boogeyman. And the new boogeyman was Islamic extremism and some uh, Israeli uh, KGB Mossad chief there by the name of Issa Harel, the same name as the man who happened to live across the street from uh, Tamberlin Zanayev, the Chechnyan boy who with his brother were accused of pulling off a bombing in Boston. Issa Harel was the Mossad chief in the 80s who predicted the fall of two towers in New York. He warned of Islamic extremism all of those years before, and suddenly it came to pass, wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know that the Twin Towers came down and, and Tutti Frutti, Rudy Giuliani was the patriot who just happened to be there and happened to admit that he was on the scene the night before with FEMA and they were told of collapsing towers? Hmm. And we talk about patriotism today. Shame on us, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Stalin could boast the dumbest generation in World War II would help him enslave not only all of the peoples that he could garner besides his own in Europe and in Asia, but to actually take back American POWs, thanks to Eisenhower, and keep them until they died, put them in slave labor camps. Eisenhower laughed his way through the war. Roosevelt happened to die in the meantime, and we forgot all about them our own men. Yet we hear about all these great patriotic talk show hosts today that want to send troops to the Ukraine now, boots on the ground in Iraq and all over the world to fight, fight, fight for freedom and democracy. Well, of course, that's the end of the empire when we reach that state where we can no longer continue to be the so-called policemen of the world and we are rotting from within as Rome itself did 2,000 years ago we know time is not very long. Time is short. We're running out of it. Anyone will admit that. We're in big trouble. And bigger trouble than you think economically and politically. Here at home in Rhode Island, it's a disaster. Stores are closing. We're going to see many more stores close their doors, national chains, and local stores that can no longer continue with the snet of corruption here, the stench of filth and deviancy from the legislature. It's worse now than it was under Gordon Fox. 
Move over, Nikki Mattiello. You'll be next. You see, folks, it's all scripted. The script is coming to pass, but the Bible tells us where it'll all end. And it will end with this age will end in Jerusalem in a very short time when Satan himself comes to rescue this world from total collapse. Violence shall fill the earth, and then the man of sin will bring peace to the earth, the false Jesus. Right now, we're going to get to ISIS today, the fraud of ISIS, and who and what it is and where it came from. And right now, let's get to it. So, I hear from the Jewish media and their Gentile pawns screaming about this ISIS for weeks now to justify more slaughter and killing of my people back home. Do you think Arabs use acronyms? And when was the last time you ever saw Arabs using acronyms in anything they market or sell? Why would they use English acronyms when they are trying to appeal to constituents that mostly do not speak any English in Arab land? And how fitting that those acronyms are catchy, easy to remember, like ISIS, to be marketed to the blind sheep of the United States. So where does this ISIS acronym come from? And what intelligence agency actually uses that acronym ISIS, you ask? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You mean to tell me a Jewish intelligence agency, Mossad, uses the acronym ISIS its whole entire life? What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Seriously. Well, have a listen for yourself. You tell the story about how you tried to find out what the what they call the Mossad when they deal with uh, I publicly? A, I thought it was a reasonable question, but the trouble is uh, you can't pick up the phone book. There's no uh, Langley in, the, in Israel that you can look up you know, CIA, or in our case, uh, the Mossad. We thought we should ask, what shall we call it in English? You can translate the Hebrew words, as I said, Mossad is institute. But when they write a letter to their friends in the CIA or the British intelligence, what do they call themselves? It took a while. Uh, it was a matter of asking the prime minister's spokesman. The best you could do, because officially uh, the Mossad is under the prime minister's office. And uh, I think he sort of wondered why you want to know and all that, so we explained. And he came up with uh, the Israeli Secret Intelligence Service. I mean, if it were to have initials, it would be ISIS. Just simple words like that. Interestingly enough, a kind of a British model. The British don't really like the names MI5 and MI6. For Did you get that? ISIS. I-S-I-S. -I -S, Israeli Secret Intelligence Service. You fools. What? Now you're going to tell me that this al-Baghdadi guy is an Arab leader of a caliphate? <sighs> Come on. I'm sorry, but just sit down and shut your mouth because you already know where I'm going to go with this. Yes, he is Jewish and his name is Simon Elliot. Edward Snowden has already released documents proving that and a French newspaper has already reported on this. But your Jewish masters in the US especially, your terrorist senator John McCain will not allow it to be publicized. And here is the same Jewish terrorist, Simon Elliot, masquerading as a leader of the Islamic Caliphate. And here he is hanging out with your senator, John McCain, orchestrating and funding the new terrorist group. This is all nothing but a charade. And do not think for a minute this is just an isolated incident. They have been doing this for a long, long time. It is time to round up and arrest the majority of U.S. congressmen, senators, politicians, bankers, Wall Street executives, and corporate leaders because they are all guilty of treason. A Fox News alert, growing concern that the terror tirade in Iraq will soon be coming here to the United States. The seeds of 9-11s are being planted all over Iraq and Syria. You don't have to believe me. This is what they're telling you they're going to do. I am concerned, uh, and I think um, all Americans should be concerned. I guarantee you this is a problem that we will have to face. And we're either going to face it in New York City or we're going to face it here. Well, that is pretty scary. With more on the threat, Peter Johnson Jr. joins us live. Yeah, good morning, Steve. And I think all we have to do is look at the words of Colonel Kenneth King, who's the former commander at Camp Book of Prison in Iraq. Let's see his experience. And that's the fear coming to a city, including New York, as a result of what they're doing. It's important to understand who al-Baghdadi is. 
He's got a PhD in Islamic studies from Baghdad University. He's considered one of the most brutal leaders in the world now. His nickname is the Invisible Sheik. He was detained at Camp Boca, as you know, and then pushed out of Al-Qaeda in 2013. And now we know that there's a $10 million bounty for his death or capture eerily similar and perceived by many of the al-Qaeda and former al-Qaeda forces, including the people at ISIS, as the logical successor sure. to Osama bin Laden. And a lot of foreign policy experts are saying that the similarities are too eerie and too disturbing in terms of the way that Afghanistan was going in the 1990s to the way that Iraq is now proceeding in 2014. We only have to look at the radio address that al-Baghdadi gave last January. This is disturbing. He said, our last message is to the Americans. Soon we will be in direct confrontation and the sons of Islam have prepared for such a day. So watch, for we are with you watching. It's all scary about this. So that's the guy who's running that's ISIS the guy. right now. That's this the guy. is the same guy we had in prison and now and, 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 and let him loose. And released and allegedly made a threat at the time that he left Camp Booker. Then we need to be on the defensive and the offensive to ensure safety in our cities. It's a continuing, sure. continuing battle in this war on terror. We are also learning more about the leader of this terror group, a man described as the new bin Laden, the heir to bin Laden. It turns out he had been in U.S. custody until 2009 over in Iraq, when he was then handed over to the Iraqi government as part of our troop drawdown. And then he was released. Now he has led this effort to create an Islamic caliphate, a nation state ruled by harsh, radical Islamic law and dedicated to killing, quote, non-believers and spreading its power as far as it can. Ken King is the former commander of the prison where that man was held until his release in 2009. Ken, thank you so much for being here. The most disgusting, vile terror group we've seen in recent history. Well, Jeff, the group's mysterious leader is a man known as Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Uh, he is so elusive that we only have a couple of grainy photographs of him. But al-Baghdadi now commands uh, several thousand men in Iraq and Syria, where he's trying to set up a state based on Islamic law. Al-Baghdadi is so feared that some people have dubbed him the new Osama bin Laden, and the US government has placed a $10 million bounty on his head. And here we go again. Every few years, the US government props up a new boogeyman for the masses to fear. And so the latest corporate mainstream media terrorist propaganda deception is in full swing. And this time it is in the form of a group called ISIS, which of course has deep occult meaning. What we are seeing here is another psychological operation being thrust on the masses to instill fear and tug at the heartstrings of every individual still stuck in the corporate elite government owned mainstream media paradigm. As we have seen in the past, the shadow government, elite and mainstream media is able to propagate blatant lies and propaganda in order to create a fictional villain and enemy of America in order to achieve their new world order agenda. Time and time again, over the past decade, the so-called terrorist group known as Al-Qaeda has been proven to be a creation of the CIA and continues to this day to be operated by the same forces. They have proven to be nothing but fictional boogeymen, along with Osama bin Laden, aka CIA asset Tim Osman. Among researchers and activists over the years, it is common knowledge that the bin Laden death was a hoax. The mere fact that the US government has never provided any evidence whatsoever proving his death should speak volumes as to the legitimacy of the great war on terror and the idea of terrorists in general and also 9-11. Bin Laden and Al-Qaeda is a fictional villain in the game of war by deception. And so is this new group called ISIS and its leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. This so-called extremist group will likely be the scapegoat in the future false flag operation that will lead to another war. As we can see, the next 9-11 false flag fear mongering is in full swing, and the usual culprits pushing this fear campaign is present as well. Republican South Carolina Senator, New World Order puppet and agent of evil, Lindsey Graham, is one of the key figureheads of this operation and agenda. Graham made his first fear circus go around in 2013 when he sounded the alarms of America being nuked. 
After Obama's State of the Union address, he stated, quote, the world is literally about to blow up, end quote. He was then used to push the fear propaganda for the Syria operation that was no doubt meant to start World War III. He was a key mouthpiece that pushed for Syria intervention, which was proven by thousands of activists throughout alternative media and social media networks to be a complete lie, which is why intervention was so widely protested, thus why the Syria operation failed. Graham publicly stated, quote, the United States could suffer a nuclear attack if it did not contain Syria's chemical weapons program, end quote. And, quote, I believe that if we get Syria wrong within six months, and you can quote me on this, there will be a war between Iran and Israel over their nuclear program, end quote. And last but not least, Graham told a crowd in South Carolina, quote, my fear is that it won't come to America on top of a missile, it'll come in the belly of a ship in the Charleston or New York Harbor, end quote. And now he is added again for the ISIS Iraq operation. They use the same old puppet mouthpieces because they know the masses will not be paying attention or care. The next 9-11 is coming from here. That's very, that's a very serious... That's what they say and I agree with them. You think that we can have another... Oh, I think it's inevitable. He told us, he told me and the, and the soldiers that were around me, I'll see you in New York. That is just chilling. This man, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, has his eye on New York and his intentions are evil. I'll see you guys in New York. Yes, the fear-mongering, mind control, corporate mainstream media, this is how they do it. CNN, of course, terrifying execution images in Iraq. Terrifying terror. Terrorists. See, th these are the same old words. Uh, they use certain trigger words to evoke certain emotions from you uh, regarding, you know, anything relating to terrorism, you know, so e evoking the 9-11 the trauma. Uh, and that's what 9-11 was, a trauma-based mind control event. Now they can control the minds of the masses uh, since that event from that event moving forward until they reach their goal they can they can literally control your mind and and play you like a fiddle with every event and every story that they put out using certain words and this is how mass mind control works through words that trigger fear and this is how it's done as you see here since ISIS came about this is what they are doing Yes, viewer discretion is advised. So you see, these are the tactics of the media and how the government and elite use the media to usher in their new world order agenda through these false flags, through these psychological operations. And remember, under the 2012 NDAA, and I covered this already, but propaganda, aka lying, aka bullshitting the public, is legal. <laughs> It is, in fact, legal under the 2012 NDAA to lie to the masses, to create, to basically execute psychological operations on the masses. And it is legal. There's not a damn thing we can do about it. We can't prosecute the media. We can't do a damn thing because it is legal under 2012 NDAA. And again, remember the occult significance of the word ISIS. It's an Egyptian goddess and deity that is a favorite of the occult mysteries and secret societies that run this planet. Uh, so it's no coincidence here, this terrorist so-called extremist group called ISIS. And what do we have here? Is it also merely a coincidence, merely coincidental, that there is a contractor, U.S. government, called ISIS? Yes. How oh, coincidence, I'm sure. ISIS provides worldwide security, intelligence, technology, and training to government and private enterprises. Our Washington, D.C. office is located in Ronald Reagan Building. We are dedicated to supporting our national defense and security departments, as well as government contractors and private business, with mission and critical services performed by highly skilled experts in their fields. Interesting. U.S. Armed Forces, U.S. Government, and Prime Contractors on the ground in such strategic environments as the Middle East. Uh, see our locations map at the bottom. Multinational Forces, Iraq, Theater-Wide Security Services. 
interesting choice word theater wide department of defense dod anything else in iraq sure iraqi voting legislature personal protective services iraq coalition for peace client contract supported organization as you can see now you know who is really isis who is really behind isis and this entire operation a steady buildup of particular stories that have a subliminal resonance with September 11, 2001. In other words, these subliminal resonance functions to trigger the trauma of September 11, and people begin to experience levels of fear. They're being re-traumatized in essence. The psychological warfare is usually issued through fear. There's your fear. And usually this fear comes out of a trauma, a trauma, a traumatic event. Any trauma, any, any traumatizing event, media uses this to, to its advantage. I mean, that's some, that's some serious mind control propaganda. If you all really think about it, this one event, this traumatizing effect of this event and how it has impacted our subconscious mind is truly profound. In terms of us, real quickly here, Osama bin Laden, the way that people were led to believe in this illusion was through computer generated images. What they did was they gave people computer generated images that looked like video games. And they said, look here, SEAL Team 6 went in and assassinated Osama bin Laden. And many people said, oh, wow, that's true. It happened. And officials say, experts say, that's all manipulation, too. When they say experts, officials say, someone speaking on anonymity, that's all me media manipulation. It was fascinating to me because when I was, when I, I think it was ABC, they were this whole big production about SEAL Team 6, and they, they carried it on for, for, you know, they kept talking about it, like, for weeks. And now new reports, we have this new evidence, and we now have, uh, we have this new report, and, and, and here is, here is an ex uh, uh, here is what took place. Here's what we know. That's what they use. Here's what we know. And then they start showing this, these computer generated images, and it looks like it looks like a video game. And they show this, you know, these group of seals, but it's really just a video game. It's virtual reality, and they go through and they're fighting in this, you know, the first floor. They go up the they go up the stairs or shoot Osama bin Laden's son, and they and they, they have it's just all computer generated images, and they, they're talking as if this is an actual evidence and proof that this actually took place. <laughs> so y'all notice everything here around September 11, since September 2001, you start to hear stories about terrorism. Nothing ever happens, though, right? We heard a new terror plot from Al Qaeda. We heard about this from the treasure trove of information that we got uh, from Osama bin Laden. Y'all remember that? That's foolishness. We got a treasure trove of information, and we have an idea that there's going to be a terror attack. It's been going on for the last 11 years. Does anything ever happen? No. Why issue that programming then? That's the question. It's just programming. It's triggering. It's triggering the trauma of September 11, 2001. So this date is important because it ties Osama bin Laden to September 11. When people, when, when people say September 11, or when they say Osama bin Laden, there's a subliminal association that's made between the two. Because Osama bin Laden is said to be the mastermind, supposedly, of these terrorist attacks. All righty, and now you know the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say. Folks, it's as plain as the nose on your face in the mirror. You can see it for yourself that we are lied to on a daily basis, but it's done with a straight face. Lion Lester and the rest of the team, the Engels and the, well, I can go right down the list, my friends, the, the, the Andrea Mitchells and the Chuck Todds and you name them, they're out there, folks, on all of the networks. I refer specifically to the National Baloney Company. You've seen it for yourself. You be the judge. Wake up before it's too late. And remember that the truth will set you free no matter who you are if you want it. Rick Adams, goodbye, and Yahweh bless is all.